Good morning. How are you guys doing? Social media breakfast crowd, as you are gathering, um, I'm here with Dana Steele. We are going to be talking about you and your brand. And we are also going to be talking about all kinds of fun things, the rock business, how to create a job you love. I mean, Dana has like basically reinvented herself many times. She's like the Madonna of Houston. I'm just, I say. <laughs> she reinvents herself often. And so um, I am like really, really excited to have her here um, and have all of you here too. So um, question for everyone. Um, tell us in the comments that you're here. Tell us what your name is, where you're joining us from. And just try to tell us like in just a couple of words, like what you do. Oh, so just go ahead and say it however you want, but we're going to get that down to three words today. So it's good to start thinking about what you do. And I have a little post, uh, I'm really well known Dana for these index cards. So I do all of my content on index cards. Oh, mine, my the, there's a little book. There's a little book. And then, and then I scratch things out. Somebody said I needed therapy and I'm like, that is therapy. <laughs> just like there, that's done. So also, I'm, I'm going to say this, um, it, this thing just is telling me, just so in case you guys wonder, it's saying we're having trouble streaming to Facebook. This may be an issue on Facebook's end. It's possible the stream was ended or deleted on Facebook. It wasn't, but I don't know what's going on. So um, hopefully I will give little, uh, Tracy's helping us out. So she will um, maybe make some uh, a post on Facebook. So we are streaming in multiple places. So tell us if you're here and where you're, where you're from. So if you're like worried and on Facebook, uh, yeah, definitely that's not happen. Um, so I'm just going to say Facebook isn't streaming, isn't streaming. Okay, cool. I don't want to spend too much time on the tech part because I do have somebody on the other end working uh, with this. So let her know. So Tracy's on there. So you can um, message the Facebook page if you're hearing this. Uh, she, she can answer you. So, um, anyway, moving on because you know, there's always some technical problem. Okay. So Nick's on, yeah, Nicholas is on YouTube. Good. Excellent. It is what it is, right? I don't know why Facebook does what it does. That's the funny thing about social media, Dana, right? Is that you never know what it's going to do. You know, and, and you can be the most, uh, uh, the biggest expert in the world. Um, a perfect example is zoom. I mean, we've all been Zooming for how long now? 18 months? Longer? Mm -hmm. 18 years? Yeah. Whatever it is. It seems like 18 years. Um, uh, and and we still forget to turn on our camera or turn on our mic or mute our mic. I read a great story yesterday. There's a guy I follow, Henpeck Tal, I think it is, on, on Twitter. A, a really funny dad content. And... Um, he 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 got up and went to a craft beer store during a very long conference call and he had his he had his mm -hmm. airpods muted and everything and he he had to answer a question in the in the conference so he's standing there checking out the craft beer store and the and the person behind the counter hears him say yeah i'm sorry yeah i am out and about i'm at the pharmacy i had to pick up I had to pick up uh, something at the pharmacy and you hear the person behind the counter at the craft beer store go, do you have any questions about your prescription, sir? So we've all just had to learn. How to <laughs> yeah, it was funny because um, early in the pandemic, uh, my kids obviously were doing um, online school and one of the kids in the class was out shopping during, during her <laughs> class. Yes. And her teacher's like, I mean, they got really strict about, you know, st stay in front of your computer. You can't be out and about. So it reminded me of when we could put on something like, what was it? Mm -hmm. It was, I think it was Anagata DeVita was like 17 minutes and 16 seconds. I used to know these things by heart, but I could go to the store and it was back when we all still smoked at KLOL and everything. So I could go to the store or I could go to Griff's and pick up my chicken and dumplings to go on a Wednesday if I put yeah. on. In Agata de Vida, and then still get back to the radio station in time to go. That was in Agata de Vida, Rock 101, KLOL with Dana Steele. <laughs> yeah. And, and you so, hope the record did skip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so true. Because, yeah, the, the records versus like digital music, it's so crazy how different. See, so, we were having technical problems back then, too. So there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. So let's actually dive into this because I don't know if ever, everybody knows you or not. I feel like everybody should, but. Dana is a um, rock, rock Radio Hall of Famer, host of the Rockstar Principles podcast, which is a really great podcast that you've been putting on. We'll talk a bit about that. She's a successful entrepreneur. She's 
had several businesses, you know, she sold, she's, she's done a, a lot of really cool stuff, including the NASA store, if you guys remember all of that. So crazy stuff in the past. Um, she has, she's the author of 15 books. So like, she's got Amazon covered. Um, so helpful with that. All the books that you've written. Actually, I need some tips from you on how you get all these books written. So fast. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about that. And um, she includes the, the best selling business book, Rock to the Top. Um, so that's some of the stuff we're going to be talking about today is really how you can take the rock star principles that she's put together and apply them to your own business and your own life. And I love that. And then what you can learn about success from the world's greatest rock stars. And that's really what you've done is, you know, all of these great rock stars and you know what they've done wrong and you know what they've done right. So it's not, you know, you've taken those lessons and you've distilled them into some really cool things that you're helping people do. Um, so Welcome to Social Media Breakfast again. So this is your repeat repeat flyer, and I appreciate you coming again um, because I really do think that at this point you're you've put together like this next level for you, which is you know how can we take these rock star principles and apply them to our life? So cool. So well, I, and I miss welcome. being in person. I can't wait till we can uh, all be back together again. But this is great because it allows. I'm on the West Coast. Good morning. It's six thirty. Um, good. <laughs> but we, I've got friends on from New York. I've got friends. On, so it's great that we're doing this and, and we've got people on from all over. So good morning. Hi, Tracy Shannon. I know Tracy Shannon. Good yes. Morning. Yes. That's who's, it's who's taking care of us today. So, um, awesome. And so we've got, people are finding us, I hope, because I see they're coming in from YouTube and LinkedIn. We've got Elizabeth and Nicholas and Geeka. Hi. And Jeremy. Uh, and Jeremy, hey, how are you? And Tracy, of course, and uh, hopefully other people that were lost from Facebook will find us because Facebook didn't stream. So we will take this and we will upload it. I'll probably do a little edits and upload it to Facebook so people can watch it there later. So um, that being said, um, I just want to just dive into um, passion. So you have done just a lot of different things. So how do you decide what it is your next next project is going to be? You've just gone through a whole transition. So could you kind of walk us through your thinking process and sort of where you came from and where you're going? You know, it just kind of comes naturally to me now. But what I have people do who are trying to figure out what's next, I'm not happy. You know, I was I was I had sold the space store for a great amount of money. I was they were paying me six figures to run it with an unlimited expense account and a hundred percent matching 401k. I mean, everything, a dream job. I could do whatever I wanted anytime. And I was so unhappy and so miserable. How can I be so miserable? And I kept telling, you know, wonder husband, I, I, I'm, I'm so unhappy, but I don't want to, what it is I want to do. So what I did and what I advise people to do now is every night before you go to bed, Keep a, keep a, I, I love journals. I love paper, whatever. You can put it on your phone if you want. But every night before you go to bed, write down where were you were most content that day. Not giddy, happy, not just content. Where were you, where were you not a heart attack waiting to happen? Where were you not stressed out of your mind? Where were you just content? Mm -hmm. Write it down. It can be one sentence. It can be a couple of words. It doesn't have to be a dissertation every night before you go to bed. <laughs> and don't really go back and read it for six weeks, but do it. Do it for six weeks, six to eight weeks then go back and read it. And you should start to see a pattern. I saw a pattern of, I was most content when I was writing, when mm -hmm. I was doing whatever project it was from home, when I was working on PR and the website, um, not necessarily going to corporate meetings. Um, mm -hmm. When I was taking my kids to school, when I was having lunch with my kids. So I, it sort of started to, I, that's when I realized I need to quit this job, start my own PR firm, uh, mm -hmm. help others and uh, start writing, start writing. And that's where, uh, you know, I wrote the book and people started asking me to speak and it just kind of all came from there, but I had to figure out where was I content? And that's what life is about. It's not about being wildly successful and, or, or I just had this talk with my 22 year old. He's like, mom, I work in a movie theater. I come home, I play video games I eat a pizza. I pet the cat. I'm happy. You know, You're that's like, not okay. happy for me, but that's happy for him. He's yeah. very content to just do that and come home and relax. So, you know, you have to find where is your happy spot. So yeah. you ask me how I get books written. That's my happy spot. I like to sit down and write and, and put it all together. Although I do like I procrastinate. 
Uh, the, next book is, <laughs> the next book is in its final stages of editing. And that's when the title of the book becomes that effing book, because I don't want to read it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. And I finally just have to force myself to either either go, I have to go somewhere. I go to a library, I go to a Starbucks, I go somewhere and I block out five or six hours where I can get food and coffee and nobody knows me and nobody will bother me. And I can just, okay, I got to get this done. Yeah. And I think that that's like, you know, if you're a procrastinator, I am too. So I have to, I have to have guardrails built in yes. my life. Yes. Um, I have people that I've touched paces for me. It's like about deadlines, you know? So like, if I have a meeting with you next week, I'm going to get that thing done before I have that meeting. I, I kind of need little guideposts for myself. I don't know if that helps other people too, but I love how you're saying just different environment. That's cool. Like change your environment. Oh, Cause I will find everything else that needs to be done. Uh, the laundry. <laughs> oh, I need to put that cup away. Oh, look, I could plant that. Like it's like squirrel. <laughs> um, so I literally have to go somewhere. Yeah. Uh, even a library is not good for me anymore. Cause I'm like, Ooh, books. Um, I just, <laughs> Um, Starbucks is actually a really good spot for me because I know what they have. Uh, I'm in Palm Springs right now and I don't know a lot of people mm -hmm. here just yet. Um, yeah. So I'll just go sit in a corner somewhere. So people don't come say hi to you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's like I can't go to the Starbucks anymore in uh, Clear Lake. Right. You know, I can, but I can go to the uh, Starbucks in downtown Houston because I, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. a lot of people there anymore. In that neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, in Clear Lake, no, nah, can't do it. <laughs> if that is a small community, <laughs> I'll admit to that. There, everybody knows everybody there. Um, so that that's really great tip because I think sometimes people don't realize that just a little interrupt in their schedule or just a little something like that can help them get back on on schedule and on task. I love that. Um, and you're talking about discovering your passions. We said we we you know talk about that, and this, I, I like what you're saying. So every day, writing down something that makes you happy for that day just at the, well the end of the day where were you where were you most content i hate the dishwasher i hate the, so my husband took that over a long time ago loading and unloading it's just one of those jobs that's never done but for some mm -hmm. reason i love folding laundry i just it's a zen moment for me i can mm -hmm. i can think about i love to cook that's my meditation mm -hmm. at the end of the day everybody knows get out of my way i'm in the kitchen it's what i do so but I had to find these things and, and it took me six to eight weeks of writing this down. And again, where were you most content during the day? Where, what was it you were doing? Now find something, find a job, find something that entails where you were most content. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to a group of uh, uh, energy interns who were getting ready to graduate into oil and gas. And I had a young man come up to me just so agitated afterwards. He was getting ready to graduate. He was going to be in accounting in oil and gas. And he goes, I'm getting ready. It's not like I can, my, my passion's golf. It's not like I can go play golf all day. And I mean, my parents, I mean, uh, this poor kid, he was a heart attack waiting to happen at 36. Yeah. He was like, I was like, I have to do this job. And it's what my grandfather does. And it's what my dad does. And they paid me and they paid for my college education. And I have to do this now. I'm going to be an accountant in oil and gas. I'm not passionate about it, but it's going to pay the bills. I was like, Golf Tech needs accountants. Um, you know, Dick Sporting Goods needs accountants. Tiger Woods needs accountants. Mm -hmm. Go be an accounting in, an accountant in golf. Mm -hmm. well, I couldn't do that. I'm like, why not? You know, take your little stressful oil and gas job, but at night and on the weekends, research who in the golf industry is looking for an accountant. And then, yes, you can play golf all day. It'll pretty much be expected of you. In fact, so, I mean, that's, I mean, see, that's the kind of thing is like that out of box thinking rather than what you have to do. So if you're using have to language, that's a, a key that's probably not your passion, right? Yeah. yeah. I have to do this or I have to do that. None of us want to do anything we have to, like, I have to finish that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tracy says she loves folding the laundry, but she hates putting it away. <laughs> Same here. Same here. I just want to fold it. Now everybody yeah. else put everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> Elizabeth says, "So cool to see you, Jane. I'm a fan of 101." Thank you. Hey, Thank you. Yeah. I will forever appreciate that and never get tired of hearing it. So. Yeah, please. She's Thank she's you. amazing at this. Um, so let's just kind of take it from there. So now you've kind of kind of figured out like this is kind of what makes lights my fire, right? These are the things that light my fire. So I mean, how do you get a job into that? I mean, so that's 
how do you get a job? Well, it, it is. It's just <clears throat> doing what you have to do. Like I said to this kid, to pay the bills, you got to take your job. But start reading up on the things you think you might want to do. Um, mm -hmm. If there's somebody that you admire that you want to be them, mm -hmm. what? Is, how did they get there? Research them. What is their background? Follow them on Twitter. Follow them on Facebook. Follow them on Instagram. Um, you know, just observe, learn, mm -hmm. uh, research at night. There's, uh, what are some of the, I haven't had to look for a job in a long time. Yay. Well, I mean, yeah, you can, you can but like, like monster, isn't monster like a job site? And yeah, I mean, I haven't exactly yeah. gone after a job in a long time either. Um, considering, but who are the people you want to be on LinkedIn? Yeah. Are you following them? Are you following their companies? Are you, you know, this is the social media breakfast. The whole point of social media is to be social. Find the people you're really fascinated in or the people you want to be, follow them, and then start to engage with them. Um, share their posts, uh, comment, ask questions, be curious. That's how you find new positions and new things. Yeah, good point here, Tracy, to says, great point. Take a skill you have, you have to, and find an entrance point into your passion. I love that. Yeah, so good. Yeah. yeah. So um, that being said, um, I want to dive into the into the exercise we're going to do today. So usually if we were together, guys, I'd make you pull out your paper. I'd make, I'd be looking to you in the eyes and I'd be like, pull out your paper. So I've got my card. Um, I've been thinking about this for a little bit because I got to talk to Dana beforehand, right? So there it is. Um, so what I want you right now to type into the chat, um, what you do for a living, like just put it in there for right now real quick. Okay. So I don't, I want to see it. So it, this is participation required. So please do it. Um, what are you doing right now? Right? So as we do that, I want Dana to talk a little bit about her, um, concept of three words, one sentence, one paragraph. So can you kind of just talk about your concept as they're writing this down and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll start to kind of get these guys like narrowed down. This came from sitting on a plane, you know, doing a lot of traveling for speaking in, in the old days, a year and a half ago. Uh, but I've been a speaker for the last 10 years and I noticed on airplanes mm -hmm. when somebody asked the question, making small talk. So what do you do? I'd say, I'm a speaker and an author. And they, you know, it's that old, they want to chew their arm off and get away from you. And they're like, ah, that's nice. And they put on their headphones or they open their book or whatever, and their whole body shifts. It's like, oh God, don't talk to me. Uh, you're going to sell me Amway or something. Just go away. Um, and, and I found that it didn't engage people. So I had to mm -hmm. find a different way, especially at a conferences. What do you do? I'm a speaker and an author. Or you go into this long dissertation. Well, I used to be on the radio and then I learned this. And then I said, so I came up with three words, one sentence, one paragraph. When somebody says, what do you do? You need to be able to tell them in three words what it is you do. Three compelling words that make them go, oh, what does that mean? Now, they may not do a body shift at that point, but you want it to be three words that make them ask for more. So... Um, I'll give you some good examples. I'm coaching um, a, a young woman who just graduated in PR mm -hmm. and, you know, she gave me this long convoluted, well, I'm not really sure because I just graduated, but I want to have like, stop. And so we narrowed it down to three words she could say with confidence. What do you do? Write for entertainment. Well, what does that mean? Well, I just graduated in PR and I want to write blog posts, pre traditional press releases, podcast questions for someone or an entity in the entertainment business. Oh, well, like what, you know? Um, so three words, mine are create rock stars. And then I don't say another word. You know, it's like sending somebody a five paragraph email, stop it. Um, three words, what do you do? Create rock stars. Inevitably, I have never had somebody go, oh, that's nice. Never, 100%. People say, what does that mean? Are you in the music business? Are you a manager? Mm. But more often than not, they say, what's it mean? And then I say, here's my one sentence. I, I am a Hall of Fame rock radio DJ. And I learned long ago what makes the difference between a rock star and a one hit wonder. Which has 100% led to. That's cool. What'd you do? Where were you on the radio? Who did you meet? What did you learn? It just leads into something. And then I can do my paragraph, which is 
You know, I spent years on the radio working with the world's greatest rock stars and also one hit wonders. And I really started to observe what made a rock star and what made a one hit wonder. It wasn't necessarily talent. What it was, was the rock star principles and the work ethic and the discipline to do what it took to get to the top. And at that point, they've turned around and they're like, you know, did you ever meet Van Halen or who did you yeah. who did you learn from or, you know, and so then you have a conversation and and people, you know, and it's fun because they're true stories. And yes, I did hang out with these people. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, great sex, drugs and rock and roll and good lessons. Yay. Um, and so inevitably at the end of a flight or the end of a meeting or the end of a coffee, you want that person to say, you know what? give me your card or how can I reach you or my company hires speakers or do you do any private coaching or what are you working on right now? Then you can go in with the whatever it is you need from this person or you'd like for this person to, you know, uh, carry on the conversation. You know, I would love to come speak to your group or, well, actually I'm, I'm working on a play that will premiere in Houston this fall or, you know, that sort of thing. You want, you want them to say, how can we take this into the future and do more together? No, I love this so much. Um, and what, what's interesting about the first three words to me, um, you know, I create rock stars. That's cool because it's about the per, it's about other people. It's not about, I do X, Y, Z, correct? Is that your thing? Like yeah. I mean, you want it, you People will ask questions if they think there's something in it for them. Create rock stars. Either they've got a kid or, you know, somebody in their life they love that writes music and they're thinking, oh boy, you know, I can get my kid a record deal. Or they love celebrities. They love rock stars, whatever. It's piqued their passion. It's piqued their interest. You know, if, yeah, it's got to be about, my my um my brother-in-law Colin Gold was in hotel management for a long time and now he's a speaker and a writer and he when people say what do you do we came up with his three words and his is gold level service oh what's gold level service well i was the general manager of several several top hotels around the world and uh i learned you know what what makes the best customer service what brings a customer back again and again? That and that's an interesting thing to hear about if you're the, the customer side or even the business side. That's really, really cool. And really then cool. everybody always has, you know, everybody always wants to tell him their horror story from a hotel or their their best customer service story. So you just want to, you want to pique people's interest because what's in it for them? I used to do a lot of crisis communication training in Houston for oil and gas and chemical companies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we kept trying to explain to them, it's not about you. When you are on, when you are giving your statement, because you've just blown up the neighborhood or whatever, um, it's not about you. And you've got to remember that when you are speaking in a meeting, when you're speaking on stage, when you're speaking to one person, it's not about you. That one person is thinking the same thing at all times. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? And what's in it for me? Yeah, so, no, it's true. You know, so... Because that's why they actually, um, you were talking about, I just wrote that down because whenever they like back off of you, that body language change and stuff, that's because they're afraid you're like trying to get, like manipulate them in some way, I guess. Or they just say, I'm not interested in that or whatever it is. Um, I think that's really, really powerful. So I want to start pulling a couple of these up on the screen for us to like look at. Okay. So I'll start at the top. Um, and I'm going to tell people, this is not easy. This is... Um, uh, you know, if you drink, I tell people this is a bottle of wine with a couple of friends and just throwing it around and throwing it around and throwing it around until you go, that's cool. And then practice it on your friends and your coworkers or whatever. Uh, practice it until you can, with confidence, say, create rock stars. I love it. Because, yeah, you don't want to go, oh, I think I create rock stars, you know, because then, okay, yeah, you're not an expert. You got to be able to say it with confidence. And a smile because yep. you want people to really lean in and go, what's that mean? Okay. So pick some. So promotional marketing. Can you see it on the screen right now? 
Okay, I'm looking at my friend Hillary Graham right now. Hillary, that is too many damn words. Teaching life skills to young adults and guiding them to their successful futures. Job executive director of a nonprofit called Higher Up Texas, which, by the way, I serve on the board very proudly of this organization. And Hillary is the best damn executive director anywhere in the whole world. But Hillary, when people say, what do you do? Um, Raise up leaders? See. No, you, I create futures. Mm. Something like that. And that is what you do, Hillary. People go, what do you mean you create futures? Well, then you can use that first sentence. We, we work with high school students, teaching them skills, one skill at a time on how you really become successful, how you go out in the world. Mm. Oh, really? What do you teach? Then there's your paragraph. We teach them everything from how to shake hands, how to do a resume, how to vote, life skills, how to write a thank you note. How to address the envelope. Do you know my 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 22 year old called me the other day and he goes, okay, I got to send you something. How do I address an envelope again? Because they've not been taught this. Actually, yeah, I had my daughter wanted to send a, 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 a you know mail something to her friend and she put the stamp on the wrong side. I'm like, oh, we're gonna have to start over here. <laughs> I was like, I know. He even said to me yesterday when I was oh. home in Houston. He said, um. You know, I really wish I had paid more attention when you tried to teach me cursive because I don't have a signature. I'm like, well, you really don't need one. No. So, but if you want to learn, go online and look at a YouTube video now. Um, you want it to be, okay, Hillary tried another one. Here we go. Empowering young adults. That's great, but, but that's also boring. You want something that makes people say, tell me more. So... So you take empowering young adults and you have a couple of glasses of wine tonight, Hillary, and you take it from there. But you, you want it, you want people to to think about, again, what's in it for them? If they think there's something in it for them. Um, so it's just you have to play with the three words. Yeah. I like Tracy Shannon, social media, community management. Um you know, that's not what you do, Tracy. You, no. you, no. you baby, you babysit social media experts. <laughs> you know? So now we have to, you know, uh, you know, um, social media handholding. That's what you do. And you know, it's okay social, go, media, what? social media is only one word. So that's okay. Well, and like rock star can be one word or two words. So I yeah. create rock stars or create rock stars. But okay, Tracy, social media community management. If you'd said that to me on a plane, I'd go, oh, okay, all right. But if you said social media handholding, I'd go, ooh, tell me more because, you know, I just, I just, you know, totally blew up Twitter two years ago. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, you did. So you want it to be something that's almost kind of fun. But, but if you said social media community management to me, I'd go, oh, okay, I don't, I don't need that. But if you said social media handholding, I need that. <laughs> I do uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth has a good one here. Um, I create experiences. Yeah. And then that's going to make me go, like, well, what, what that kind mean? of experiences? Now, yeah. Elizabeth, give me your one sentence that makes me lean in and say, tell me more. So love if it. you see where we're going with that, um, plant-based chef. I love that one. Now, see, that's a challenge for me, but I love that plant-based chef because I'm trying to learn to cook more with, with, um, beyond beef and things like that, mm -hmm. but plant, plant-based chef, makes you it's like oh it's going to be this woo woo person sitting next to me mm -hmm. and uh, it's like a woo woo vegetarian ah, you know mm -hmm. i'm going to get a lecture but <laughs> now put it now put it in such a way and yeah. so we have to i have to think about this i'm going to wake up at two um, in the morning Elizabeth, yeah gonna, uh, something or, like, or, um, uh, greta greta i'm gonna spoon and sprout i'm gonna wake up at two in the morning and have some brilliant one for you i make I plants delicious right that's, or I that's I make better we're getting closer getting closer I'm just but, making it up. but but you see where I'm going with this it's a it's a you have to play with it you have to play with it so that it becomes something that makes somebody go okay that sounds interesting so um here is the one that I did I said I create connections that's that's better that's better but I want something even more a little more fun playful okay. the only time you can be really um just cut and dried is if you really do have a job that's freaking amazing. Like, yeah. you know, 
I manage Beyonce. Okay. <laughs> I want to know more. Yeah, yeah, that would do it. You know. Um, hey, I got to work for Lady Gaga once. We can talk about that go. sometime. I, that I, I, I ate in the same booth from the scene in A Star is Born. I discovered it's actually a taco shop down the street from us that's also a tire shop. Mm -hmm. And the and the and the the booth. I mean, we're just so getting off track here. But the booth yeah. where she at Bradley Cooper, where she goes, "Hey, I've written some lyrics or something." It's this, it's it's a literally a taco shop down the street that's on the side of a taco a, a tire store. And mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so Charlie and I go for there there for lunch all the time. And I go, "Look, I'm Lady Gaga." But um, three uh, words, just have fun it, with it. Uh, Adrian, Nicholas, the steel worker in the house, passion gets you out of bed in the world. Adrian, thank you. Yes, you. I love it. Hi, Adrian. Okay, Nicholas, I rock the world. What do you so? Okay. What do you do? Rock the world? Are you okay? I'm going to ask you the airplane question. Um, so, uh, Nicholas, I turn to you and I go, "So, what do you do?" And you say, "Rock the world." And I go, "Oh, cool. Are you are you like a musician?" And your answer, your one sentence answer, what is, what is it? it? Yeah. What is it, Nicholas? Yeah. I know a lot about Nicholas. He's he's a multi passionate entrepreneur, but I'd love to hear what he has to say about that. All right, so people are coming back on. Um, I see Debbie Kurt says, create brand awareness. That's great. That's boring. Now try again. <laughs> but I see where you're going. You've got it down to three words. That's great. Create brand awareness. So what is that? You know, I I'm not going to say what does that mean because it sounds like I'm going to get a lecture. Um, but I know what it means. Now put it in a way that the average person would go, what's that? You know? Something like, um, and I'm, I'm putting too many words in here, but I create brand awareness. I'm the reason you buy what you buy. Now put that now, now, now shorten that W Kurt into three words. But when if I said to somebody on a plane, "What do you do?" and you turned to me and you said, "I'm the reason you buy what you buy," mm -hmm. I would go, "Are you in advertising? What do you, you know, what do you do? Mm -hmm. What do you do?" I met a guy the other day who goes, "I I created the cards." For for Hallmark for, you know, I wrote, I wrote copy for Hallmark for 42 years. And I'm like, oh, he's a speaker. get out of here. He's a speaker. Get I'm like, is tell it? me more. I'm like, like what cards did you create? I mean, it was, I've heard it him. Was, who is, what was his name? No, this was just a guy I met here in Palm Springs at a party. No, I know there is a guy like that. And he speaks all over the world. Oh, wow. um, no, this guy's not a speaker. He and his husband both wrote, they met, they've, they've written copy for Hallmark for 40 years. How or fun. Yeah. So, Social media soothsayer. Oh, I love Nicholas. Darling, it's a long story. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a oh, honey, let's go to the taco shop and tell me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's great. Yeah, um, I love plant based. Is it Greta? Greta, Greta, Greta. I'm trying to get yeah. much better at plant based everything. So, um, but you, yeah, you really want it to be something that makes people go, okay, this is either going to entertain me. Mm -hmm. or this is going to help me, or this is going to be enlightening, or, um, you know, when, when people think of plant, I'm going back to the plant-based one, because that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. The plant-based chef, um, a lot of times when you think about plant-based, a lot of people do, sorry, they still do. They think um, boring, um, not, tasteless as, or not as filling, yeah, tasteless. So um, I make plants taste good. I make plants delicious. Um, but even that's like, ooh, this is gonna be a woo-woo vegetarian sitting next to me. So, but yeah, it's a it's a matter of playing with it. Uh Adrian, sales engineer. Oh God, I'm married to an engineer. That's a boring answer. Me too, I am too. I'm married to an engineer as well. <laughs> we both have our engineer husbands, same, same. But 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 a, a, a sales engineer, um, so you're in sales. What do you sell, Adrian? Yes. What do you sell? Um, so I, I mean, and, and what, what is it about the selling? Like do you teach people to sell. Do you like, are you the best sell salesperson in the world? Are you like, and like, again, I'm sitting stuff. next to you on an airplane. What's in it for me? Why would I ask you? Yes. Although I, I must say, I, I now get on an airplane and, um, I was telling, I used to really engage. Now I get on an airplane and I'm just like, I come over in the corner. It's like, don't talk to me. So here's Elizabeth. Um, she we we had Elizabeth's sentence, um, and now I mean, this is Elizabeth's sentence. It comes after I create experiences. We ask her what kind of experiences. She says help business owners connect with their customers through killer visuals and graphic design. 
Okay, so what you do is grab people's attention. Uh, um, what do you do? Money making images. Mm -hmm. You know, someone like that. I'm like, well, do you like take headshots? Are you doing? No, I create. You know, I create. I help business owners create. You know, visuals that will bring more customers in. Well, like who have you worked for? See how that starts to develop. Yes, uh, tell me more. It's not because, a bad. It's not a bad sentence, though. I mean, it's it's, it's right, okay, but right. it's just another statement. So probably, like the next one would be more conversational sounding. Does that make Which, sense? by the way, Elizabeth, I do want to know more because I'm looking for somebody that can create graphics for me because I've created my own and they suck. <laughs> hoo, hoo, hoo. See, please reach out to me after this at therockbusiness.com. Just go to my contact page because uh, seriously, I'm looking for somebody that can create killer visuals and graphic design for me. That is amazing. Yeah. So that's awesome. So um, actually I'll, I'll um, also put the rockvisuals.com here. And so it's also just Dana at Dana steel.com and make sure you spell it right. Or it goes to somebody named Dana steel. Who's actually an apartheid expert in New York. <laughs> How's that? We, going? We, uh, she and I have never met in person and we've been talking for about 22 years now. And we just send each other. It's like, I think this was meant for you. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> it's real obvious, obvious when I get apartheid information. Or at she least she's does. not mad at you. The person who's okay. her name is Zoetica, she doesn't like me very much. Oh. Well, mm -hmm. Dania and Dana share lots of information. <laughs> I love it. The rockbusiness.com. Here we go. Um, so that Can I just show you guys my really expensive coffee cup somebody yeah. sent me. It, it comes with a it comes with an app and it keeps my coffee at 135 degrees for about oh two hours. That's I don't so have cool. to get up and keep heating it up again. And it's called Ember. And they they a friend of mine, it's a startup and they just sent me one. They're they're 130 dollars. I would not buy a 130 dollar coffee cup. That's but hopefully cool they will come down on the price because I I constantly am putting my coffee mug in the microwave. Don't put this one in the microwave. Um, since, you, since you said that, yeah. I'm going to bring up Walter Kurt because Walter Kurt, um, I'll tell you why in a minute. He says he creates brand awareness. Um, he sells, um, you know, the tchotchke that you get, you know, printed on the side and all that, you know, all the pencils. Oh, it's not pencils. Walter. Hey, Walter. Hey. <laughs> so hey, Walter. He, a promotional, he, he sells promotional items, right? So um, that's a hard one too, I think, because I mean, all of us need them from time to time. So the question is, how do you do it? I like create brand awareness. That's interesting. Maybe. So um, I would like to hear you come up with something that encompasses, uh, you know, leaving, I, you know, I, again, three words, it's hard to do it, but you write it down and then you hone it down. Um, but what you do, Walter, is leave things behind that make people call you later. So now take that and put that into three words. Because that's really what the stuff is. I make it's, you memorable. Uh, How about that? I make people that's, memorable. That's better. That's better. Um, uh, interesting business. Interesting business cards. You know, leave behinds. Um, because what is the whole point of leaving a business card or something behind? It's because you want somebody to come back to you later on. You know, at the space store, I still have these. When I created the space store, it's a space pen. Mm -hmm. And and it says the space store on it. And, and you know, we would buy these by the carton. Uh, I mean, because what's the cool thing about a space pen is I can write upside down. I don't need to write upside down very often. No, I love that. I, I need it. I've to, always wanted a space pen. <laughs> so I will see if I have any more left somewhere. I've always um, wanted one. Uh, yeah, but what you do, Walter, is is... You know, what you do is you make somebody remember somebody later on mm -hmm. um, in, in all of my books, in the new book. The new book is 101 Ways to Rock Networking, which I was going to release in September because I thought we'd all be back in conferences again. <laughs> so no, it's a damn vaccine. So, uh, so it may be released next year when, you know, I was going to release it in conjunction with, OK, we're all getting back out in the world again. Here's a refresher course on the things you do to properly network. Now we may have to delay that just a little bit. Come on, people. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I've repeated it in several of my books, but the basics of success have to be repeated and they really don't change. It's always leave something behind. 
Um, the, the easiest way to do that is have a business card with you at all times, which by the way, only put the contact information that you actually check. If you don't check your email, don't put your freaking email on your card. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, just don't, um, if, if, you know, just, just don't put contact information on there. You don't use, um, but that's what it's repeated in so many of my books always have a stash of business cards by your car keys, in your car, in your purse, in your bag, in you your never know who you're going to write into. Whatever. You really your backpack. Back. Or if you can carry around space pens. When I first met Peter Shankman, the, the PR guru, Peter was carrying around a pocket full of um, uh, poker chips that had shankman.com on them. Um, I don't remember why, but, you know, I kept it and I hung on to it. It was something, I, it sat on my desk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's the sort of thing you want to say. Um, uh, just, I, I, you know, I make people remember you two weeks later yeah. or something, but you have to play with those. So three words, one sentence, one paragraph, all that do the same thing, make mm -hmm. people ask for more. Yeah, I love it. Um, Scott, uh, he says, when I ran an agriculture company focusing on soil, we said we fix broken dirt. What do you do? Fix broken dirt. Oh, my God. That is, I'm sorry. Good. I'm going to turn out and go, like, under buildings or, you know, what? <laughs> that work. Yeah. No, it's yeah. good. That, Scott, oh, Scott, yes. He is, um, but he, he, yeah, he's amazing. He's actually going to be uh, one of our guests coming up soon. And you guys are going to be excited because he is actually, uh, this is something you need to know about him, Adana. He is a, uh, he's like killing the Amazon influencer stuff. Like he does Amazon live influencer stuff. And since you're, you're a book author, I'm sure we can get you guys connected. I so. just need somebody else to do all this for me. I even wrote down <laughs> need assistance. That's what I'm looking. I'm going to start doing here in the next couple of weeks. So if anybody knows a good virtual assistant that knows mm -hmm. social media and graphics and iMovie and garage band and all these things I use every day. He needs a unicorn there. I've done several ads now. Somebody <laughs> goes, what Ember without a logo. It actually came with, it really is a, a major startup and it came with stickers and, and I threw those away. So oh, here's okay. Hurt. So um, Geetha came back with another idea. How about I make people fall in love with veggies? What do you do? Create create plant relationships. Well, create, I don't know. I, mean, I think love, make people love their veggies isn't bad because yeah. it's something where I mean like if you think about kids, for example, like parents would be all over that. Like, how can I make my kids eat more vegetables? But also adults are like, I should be eating more vegetables, but I don't really like them or know how to make them. So I like, I, uh, maybe like, like yeah, I love like, uh, what do you do? Create vegetable love. Oh, or, make, or make people yeah. love vegetables. I know it's more than three words, but make I create love vegetable that. love makes me all of a sudden think of that. Amy Schumer found a carrot in her garden that <laughs> had, Looked like it had two legs and a penis. Sorry. And it was hysterical. Okay. She even had it bronzed. <laughs> oh, oh, and uh, I, I didn't see this, Walter, but Walter said, did somebody say space pens? <laughs> Very exciting. Very exciting. Um, yeah, totally. Like if I worked for Fisher Space Pens or if I still ran the space store oh. and somebody said, what do you do? I would say something like, you know, what does your company do? Right upside down. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, geek. Okay. So geek had to leave, but she said this and, and she's going to watch this later, but she said, I help people get unstuck. And this is actually interesting because she does, um, Feldenkrais. So like, it's like a uh, body, you know, manipulation and stuff to, to like get your, like the pains to go away in your body. Um, so that's really cool. I love that. I get, I like it. what do you do? I unstick people. Yeah, I love that. And, and that's like, is, are you a chiropractor? Are you a therapist? Are you, you know, a, a career counselor? That could be so many things that that person sitting next to you has to ask. Because if, if they don't ask, they're mm -hmm. boring and you don't want to talk to them anyway, because they're not curious people. You know, I unstick people. It's like, do you work? do you like what do you mean by that I mean, <laughs> like, like like quicksand yeah. what um yeah, yeah. i mean if, if that doesn't create a follow-up question it's not somebody you want to talk to no um jeremy uh, i, I we will talk about what he does in a minute he says he's a business storyteller 
So he owns an agency, okay. kind of like me. Uh, he works in oil for oil and gas companies. Um, so a business storyteller. Business storyteller, oil and gas. I get your story, get your stories told or tell, I don't know, make boring stories interesting. What's something like make oil and gas sexy? Ooh, I like that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, how, how, could, you oil and gas yeah. how yeah. could you possibly do that? Yeah. Like Especially that. if you're on a, you know, if you're on, I always use the plane analogy, but you know, anywhere in, if you're anywhere in Texas and you say make oil and gas sexy, somebody's going to be interested. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely in Houston, right? Because this is where we live, especially right now, since oil and gas is losing some of its sheen, so to speak, um, because of, you know, new energy and new energy sources coming in. So how do you like, um, how do you do that? And how do you make that transition? So maybe it's more about energy in the future. So you got to think about that too. Um, let me see, Hillary, we've talked to, I'm just making sure we got everybody. Stephanie, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I just went zipping by it. Stephanie Yuma, um, she oversees day-to-day -day operations on a college campus. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay. So yeah. I have, to, I have yeah. to think about that one. Again, these are things that take a really long time. You want to throw a bunch of words around. So day-to-day -day operations on a college campus. You juggle, I juggle college students. Ooh, I mean, that's a visual. <laughs> I, 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 I juggle, you know, something like that. People go, what do you do? Well, I run the day-to-day -day operations or, or, uh, you know, I, I run, I run a college zoo. I heard the cats on the college camp or a college. Yeah. Uh, it's a college yeah zoo. I run, I run a college zoo. Hmm. Interesting. And, and people go, your college has a zoo. No, but call, running a college is like a zoo, you know, <laughs> something like that. So I run the day-to-day -day operations. Oh, really? What college? Mm -hmm. You know, such and such college. So I deal with everything from, you know, Students, you know, stuck in a closet to blah, blah, blah. and always have like a little fun story or something in your paragraph that makes people go, okay, what's the weirdest thing you've ever had to deal with? Or, you know, or, you know, where'd you go to college? You know, whatever. No, well, that's good. No, these are good. I'm just trying to see if I've missed anybody. I don't think I have. So if I have guys, oh, wait. Yes, Rhonda Powers. This is kind of cute. Um, can you guess what she does? I, I go into people's houses when they're not home. Oh, no, but I love that. I love that you uh, you you run a cleaning business. You um, I go into people's houses when they're not home. You're an organizer. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We got to get it down to three words, but it's very it's like compelling, right? A uh, realtor, right? <laughs> there you go. Cat herder. <laughs> yes. Why yes. is a cat herder? Walter, I don't get that. Cat herder, I like that. Oh, that was what I said, cat herder. Oh, what? maybe he was making that as a suggestion yeah. for uh, yeah, the college what do you students. do? Yeah, the Heard college cats, students. I heard cats. Yes, yeah, she's a realtor. I know she's a realtor. So, um, oh, I like that one, but I like that one. Because if you just said I'm a realtor, it'd be like, oh, that's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially if you say you're a realtor, then people are like, woo, I'm not selling my Although house. Although, although it's all pretty facet, I mean, the, the, the whole right industry is like on mm -hmm. fire right now. So it is, it is that that's actually true. I mean, but some, most of the time people are like, mm, if they're not in the market for a realtor, they just are, they tone, they mm, yeah. tune it out. Um, so one of the things we were going to talk about, and I'm going to be quick about it because we have 10 more minutes, um, is the rock star principles. So I don't know if there's anything that you want to talk about, like what you're doing now, or, um, we talked about the four rock star principles, but I, I don't know what you think is important in this conversation at the moment. Well, let me tell people what the principles are. They are passion. <laughs> it's finding something that you love and then finding the people that love it with you. Um, you know, once you find something that you enjoy doing, it's no longer about you ever again. Um, the second uh, rock star principle is knowledge. You know, it's constantly keeping up with your industry, with pop culture, with the world around you. Gene Simmons of Kiss once said he attributed his all of his success to the fact that he reads. He reads everything he can get his hands on and it helps him recognize opportunities for the band, for his business, for his family. It's just constantly being aware. I've got the news on in here. I got news alerts on my phone. I'm constantly reading. Networking is the third rock star principle. 
Um, and, and, and networking is doing things for other people without expecting anything in return. Mm -hmm. Networking is not being a business card psycho. I mean, 99% of people that go out to conferences or, or anything, they're constantly whipping out their business cards. Do not know unless I ask for it. Give me a compelling reason to ask you for follow-up information. Why? Uh, bring something to it. Help other people be successful. And the fourth rock star principle is appreciation. A handwritten thank you note. It may take three friggin' weeks for it to get to them now with our screwed up postal system. But as long as we have stamps and note cards, you can still send a note. Uh, appreciation is following up. Appreciation is when, when you do meet somebody and you promise something, deliver on it. Deliver on it. Um, so you have passion, knowledge, networking, and appreciation. And then here's the real kicker. It's a word nobody ever associates with rock and roll, but it is what mm -hmm. made the rock stars and the one hit wonders is rock stars had the discipline to practice these things. You know, one, one really big difference between rock stars and one hit wonders was the rock stars showed up on time at the radio station. If they were supposed to be there at 315 for an interview, they showed up at 310. If Mick Jagger was calling me for an interview at 320, he called at 315, which always threw everyone into a tizzy because he was early. He was <laughs> early. Um, no. But it's the discipline to mm -hmm. do these things over and over. I have people ask me to meet with them all the time. And it just got to the point where I, I just wouldn't do it anymore unless they did um, you know, I came, I wrote this article for Fast Company that went viral and still continues to go viral like 10 years later. And it's called Five Things to Do Every Day for Success. And if you go to the rockbusiness.com, sign up for the email, which I keep forgetting to send out. Um, it will take you to the page that gives you the five things to do. And so I would tell people, do these five things every day for 30 days, then call me and I'll sit down and have coffee with you and talk to you. And most mm -hmm. people will say, oh, well, I don't have time to do those things. Well, if you don't have time to do those things, then you don't have time to be a rock star. It takes hard work. It takes, it's not easy. No, it's not something that just is handed to you on a platter generally. So, and by the way, the five things are get up early, watch the news, send something to somebody who can give you money, not necessarily an invoice. It may just be a, Hey, saw this article thinking about you reach out to somebody you haven't talked to in a long time and just say, Hey, how are you? Don't sell them anything. And the fifth thing is write somebody a handwritten note. Do these things, five things every day for 30 days. And if you can't tell me business or life or both aren't better, then, you know, I'm just telling you, you will. I've never had anybody come back and go, it didn't work. Because if they tell me that, I'll go, did you do it? Well, no, not really. Yeah, I agree 100%. So those so, are the rock star um, principles. It's, you know... Find something you love and then work your ass off. <laughs> That's the short yeah. version. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, right? But it, it's, it's something that it's hard to like keep it up all the time. So I really appreciate that. And we definitely, I will try to find that. Um, we'll go to the rockstarprinciples.com and we'll try to put some links. Rock out business. Our rock channels. business. Oh, the yeah, rock the business. Rock business yeah, I had to do the rock business sort of, I decided I needed something that encompassed everything. Speaking. There it is. Theater, the podcast. Yeah, you can get to everything. You can get to the podcast. You can subscribe to the podcast. You can send me a note, whatever. You can get to your books from there on yep. Amazon, everything. right? Everything. Okay, good. Com. Cool. Thank you. So this is where you want to go. And we'll try to get this um, into the, the stream. Um, Tracy, if you could throw that into the stream too, so people can just go yeah, straight. Somebody, there. a LinkedIn user said, someone recap those five. Go to the rockbusiness.com, sign up. It'll take you to the original article um that we recreated from past company yeah and we'll we'll probably uh, we're not probably we will put together a blog post about this with like some of the um the whole thing together and then all the links to everything so we will have all of that but um certainly this will also be in replay so you can go back and like write everything down and listen again um, and you have all weekend to work on your three things i'm telling you yeah. three words you will be thinking about this all weekend and ask your friends and your coworkers and your family mm -hmm. and strangers you know i'm a mortgage broker how can i say that in three words that you know would make somebody 
I sell happiness, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, I loan money for happiness, whatever. A friend of mine owns um, Casey Snowballs, a famous um, snow cone place in mm -hmm. Austin. And the very first time I ever met him, I thought he was like a broker or something, you know, because he was so preppy looking. And I was like, what do you do? And he said, I sell happiness one cup at a time. Oh my gosh. That makes me I'm like, what do you, what do you do? He goes, <laughs> I run my family snow cone business. I was like, get out of here. And you can take five months off a year. I want to know more. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, these are, these are such great tips. And I think it's just worth taking the time to do this. So thank you for coming to share that with us today um, and, and helping a lot of the people in the chat um, to kind of start thinking about their three words and me. So thank you. And um, also, I just wanted to tell everybody that these are the announcements um, to save the date because we are going to have an in-person meeting, but outdoors on um, 826 at the um, Houston Arboretum. So the last time we were going to meet at the Arboretum, Dana, it rained literal cats and dogs um, that day. So we well, then I'm not coming because I bring rain with me. The whole the whole family yeah. in Florida doesn't even plan outdoor weddings anymore if I'm going to be there. So I <laughs> so don't come. I will stay away. I think you're going to be in Palm Springs anyway because it's on 826. So it's in two weeks. We're going to be meeting on Thursday. Um, I usually do a social media coffee the next day. We're canceling that and we're just going to make the coffee at the Arboretum. Um, we will probably do a little live stream. Uh, we did that last time too, but it will be very brief. Um, and the cool thing is that you can walk around the Arboretum and take amazing pictures. We're going to have a photo contest with prizes, um, with some prizes. The Arboretum is offering uh, a year's membership for free for, you know, we, we've got different categories. We're just trying I'll to get throw in a set of books. How's that? Oh, great. Cool. So a set of there books from, uh, from Dana too. So we're going to have some prizes for the photos. So I need people to come and take photos. So this is, I know hard because we haven't gotten in our cars and gone anywhere in forever. So like put it on your calendar today. If you're in Houston for 826, um, if you're not in Houston, I'm yeah, I know you can't come, but we will, um, we'll share our photos with you. Um, so that'll be fun. And also we might do a quick live stream that morning too, but it's going to be on Thursday. Plus they have free parking at the Arboretum on first Thursday. So it'll fix all the problems that we had last time. So no rain, everybody, you know, pray for no rain. And we will, um, we'll be meeting on the 826 at 830 at the Arboretum. So put that on your calendar now. And then um, the other thing I wanted to say is that in December, and this is interesting maybe for you too, Dana, we are going to do our Gift of Guidance program, which we do every year. It's our 11th year for the Gift of Guidance program, where we help 10 nonprofits um, put together their social media strategy and mini strategy. So if you have nonprofits in mind that you think would be good to apply, um, definitely let me know. But right now I'm looking for a committee, a small committee of people that are willing to help me with this program. And we're going to make it a whole day event this year. So it's going to be on, it's going to be online on zoom, but at the end of the day, we're going to also try to have a, a, a mixer that's in person. If COVID permitting, um, we'll see what it's like in December, right? So we're planning it all online. And then um, it's going to be a full day of, of um, education about how to use social media. Um, it's going to be, you know, aimed mostly at nonprofits, but you know, we are going to have some general information as well. So let me know if you want to be on that committee, um, because we're going to start meeting soon. And I'm excited about it. It'll be fun. So something to look forward to in December. All right. That being said, thank you guys so much for being here. And Dana. Thank you guys. Hearts you. So no, I um, feel free to reach out if I can help you with your three words. I'm not promising anything, but <laughs> I am going to, I am going to, some of these, I'm going to wake up at two in the morning going, oh my God, I know what it is. <laughs> so, yeah, well, let me, let me know. I'll put it in the, text me. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. <laughs> um, if it comes to you, like text me any time of the day, you know, you, you can. So um, thank you guys so much. And here we go. Have a great, great weekend. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you for having me.